It's going to be higher up is the maths 2023. So this paper was two hours long and you do it with a calculator the whole time and also you use a computer in RStudio or Excel. So bear in mind that you can always use a calculator, but also bear in mind that for each of these questions, question five, eight and 11, you have to use the data set and the spreadsheet and then print out your answers. So I'll show you all that. And also make sure that you bear in mind that you've got a data booklet. So always go out the data booklet if you need to. Right, let's get started. So SQA, high up pieces of maths, 2023, question one. A school year in Scotland usually lasts 190 days. Estimate the number of hours a typical people in Scotland will spend in school during their lifetime. State any further assumptions you make. Okay, so we need to assume how many years a school, a pupil in Scotland is at school. So let's take primary school, that's maybe seven years, high school, up to six years, seven and six, 13 years, say, some maybe a little bit less, some maybe a little bit more. So we're going to assume, we need to assume uh, 13 years of schooling. Now, to be quite um, generous with this one, as long as you say something between 11 and 15, you'll be fine. A reasonable assumption. Now, what about the number of hours that we're at school? Well, maybe our school starts at 9 and ends at about 3, maybe half 3, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 6 hours maybe would maybe be reasonable. So, assume 6 hours per day of schooling, and again, they're quite lenient with this one, anywhere between five and eight would be okay with this, okay, a reasonable assumption. Okay, so now we need to estimate the number of hours that the pupil spends in school, so we've got 190 days a year times 13 years of schooling times six hours a day. So there's the sum I need to do. Getting a calculator for all that, never you don't do anything without a calculator for this exam. 190 times 13, 13 times 6, 14, 8, 20 hours. And again, this question is there's a range of answers that is reasonable, okay? As long as your first assumption was between 11 and 15 years, and your second assumption between 5 and 8 hours and you do 190 times your years times your hours to get the total, you'll be fine there. There's worth three marks, two for the assumptions and one for your final sum. It's great, hi, application to maths, 23, question two. In a coupon competition, a contestant has 80 minutes to make a creme brulee. There are several tasks to complete. The contestant's timings are shown for each task below, and we have to complete a pair chart, as shown below. So let's Go to the pair chart and then I'll open up all the tasks at the side so we can see exactly what's happening. So there's all the tasks, I'll just zoom into them. And we have got to make three scans of this. We need to do, we need to do our standard, then a forward and backward scan. Okay, so let's start off with the middle boxes. Uh, first thing we need to do is heat the oven, that's A. So let's write down A, maybe in here, and that takes eight minutes. And then at the same time as that's happening, we need to gather ingredients and prepare the bowls, that's B. And that takes 10 minutes. Okay, so we've done these, I'll just make a little note for myself. Now we need to move down, C comes after B. So maybe C in here, and that takes five minutes. Also coming after B is D, and that takes four minutes. So they're happening simultaneously. After C and D, it says, is E, which takes two minutes. So there's E and two. After E, it says F, and F takes four minutes. And now we need to get our next ones right. So let's just move that over. So after A and F, we've got G, and that takes 35 minutes. After F, we've got H. So just after F, it goes down the way to H. So that takes 12 minutes. And then after G, we've got I, which takes three minutes, and J, which takes five. So we've done our forward scan. We can kind of get rid of this document now. We don't really need it. So let's do our forward scan. We've got zero to start with here. And then moving on to the B, that also starts at time zero. And then 0 plus 10 is 10, so we've got 10 is when this starts, 
but this one also starts at 10. And then looking at this next one is the key one, that is 15 because I need to wait until this one finishes. So 10 plus 5 is 15. And 15 plus 2 is 17. 17 plus 4 is 21. So this will both be 21. 21 and 35 is 56. So that will be in eyes. 56 and 3 is 59. So that will be in eyes. And down below, you've got 21 and 12. We've already done that one, so we've done the forward scan. So let's now do the backward scan. So starting off at the end, 59 and 5 makes 64. So I can put 64 here. Now going back away, we've got 59 because 56 and 3. Then we've got 50. 56 because 35 and 21 is 56 and on this one we've got 21 and 12 which you might think makes 56 but this is the key one h because h is at the end of it i need to wait till j then that's actually really 64 so that's a key one there you need to get that one all right let's move back to f f is 21 17 and 4 e is 17 and then we've got C and D, again, we're not, we're going to be not just 10 and 15 and 14. C is 15, D has to wait, so that's also 15. And then back to B, we've got 10. A is a key one as well. A is having to wait until we get to here, so that's 21. In other words, it's the same as F, so I have to wait until F finishes. So there's a completed chart there. Let's see where we're getting the marks for that. So six marks this was worth. We get the first six tasks in the correct sequence. We then get a mark for the remaining four tasks and durations in the correct sequence. So basically getting your, your tasks in the correct order with the middle boxes gets you two marks. And then your forward scan from A to F being correct. So up to here, if all of that's correct, you get a mark. You then from G to J, if that's correct, you get a mark. And then backwards scan J, I, H and G. So you need to get all of them to get a mark. And then finally to get the rest of them, you get another mark. So there's ways to make a wee mistake and still get your marks, okay? Right, let's answer the next part of the question. Part B says, when the contestant puts the balls in the oven, they realise the oven has not been heated to determine when, whether they can finish on time. So remember what these tasks were. Task A was to heat the oven, right? So that's not happened. We have went straight to task B and they've not heated the oven and they've got 80 minutes to complete the task. So we can say that since it actually takes 64 minutes, there are 16 minutes spare. So I can write 16 minutes spare. I worked that out by doing 80 minus 64. And then we can say it takes eight minutes to complete task A. So can they still finish on time? Yes, since A is less than 16 minutes. So for marks for that one, you're getting a mark for either saying it was it's eight minutes to complete task A over 16 minutes spare. I made a mark for saying yes because eight is less than sixteen or sixteen is greater than eight. Okay, done there. Next we have question number twenty three. Question three: An online survey sent out to people by email on the electoral roads who live in Renfrewshire. The aim of the survey is to determine which political party people intend to vote for in an up and coming election. The survey asks the following questions: State your age and years. State your gender. Which political party do you intend to vote for? Did you vote in the last election? If yes, which political party did you vote for in the last election? And the question is, state the type of data that best describes age. Well, age is a numbers, so it's numerical. And is it continuous or discrete? Well, I could be five, but he could be 16, so it's discrete. So the word, what we're looking for is discrete numerical. Two types of data, remember, there's numerical and categorical. Now, you could also use the word dis, um, discrete and then quantitative, which means numerical, but 
I, I prefer the Mary Coats because it was a member, to be honest. Right, part B2, gender. Well, gender's not numerical, so it must be categorical. Categorical. Now, you, you, you might know that the word is nominal, but you don't need to know that. Or the other words you could have used is qualitative. So you've got quantitative, which is numerical, qualitative, which is categorical. But categorical is fine for the mark. Okay, let's move on to the next bit. The results of the online survey are used to predict the outcome of an upcoming national election. Give two reasons why these results do not provide a representative sample of the national population to allow the prediction to be accurate. So there's a number of answers possible for this question, but I'll go through the most obvious ones. The first most obvious one is this. This first survey was take, take place in Renfrewshire, which is just a small little place. It's nothing to do with the whole country, so it's not a national survey, it's a local survey. That's the first reason. So we could just write that. First step, it was not a national survey. A local survey. Right, what else? Well, if we look at it, it said it was a online survey. It was an online survey. Now, can everybody access online? Maybe not everybody can get access to online. So perhaps that not all voters will be able to access the survey online. So that's that's another good reason. Not all voters could access. The survey online. Now, what else could we have said? Well, let's check what the SQA say about this. Any reasonable answers? People could vote multiple times online. That well, could happen. Uh, the invite goes into junk mail. Um, not targeting representative portions of the voting population. But you're not, to be clear, what you can't write is things like people might not want to put their true political views online. You can't, can't say people might be lying, but as in, we don't know that. Or that people might change their mind, or that people might, there's a small sample size. That's not good enough. We need to be specific about this survey. It was a local survey, therefore it's not representative for national, and it was an online survey, so maybe never, not everybody could get access to it. SQA Higher Application of Maths 2023, question four. It says you must refer to the information on tax bans 2022-23 given in the pre-release material when answering this question. Key points, so you need to go and check that booklet, so let's do it right now. So there's the tax bans there, copied in from the data booklet. Now it says James Watson, a large building company, is a permanent employee and he has a gross annual salary of £36,700. James pays 4.7% of his salary and his pension and then he pays 3071.45 national insurance. So we don't need to work at his national insurance, it's given to us. Calculate his net annual salary. Net is after you take everything off. Now, with the work out his tax, remember this is a one key thing. If you're working out someone's tax, you take the pension off first. If you don't do that, you're going to lose a mark. So taking off his pension, I need to take away 4.7%. Two ways to do that. Just work out 4.7% and then take it away. Or oh, I'll always use multipliers when I get to higher. So I'm going to do in my calculator. 100 minus 4.7, because I'm taking away 4.7, that's 95.3. So I'm going to times his salary by 0 0.953, and that will give me what his salary is after the pension is taken off. So I'm going to do 36,700 times 0 0.953. 0 0.953 times 36,700 is 34,975.10. Nine seven five point ten as he's taxable. Right now we need to use our table to work out the tax in each band. So we will just do it line by line by line. So first line we pay zero pound. Second line, well has wages way above that. So I need to do for the second line. I'm just put a little dot. Fourteen seven three two minus twelve five seventy because that's the two bands times the percent as a decimal, 19%, 19 divided by 100, 0 0.919. Now usually we just work these out separately instead of one big sum, so I'm going to do that one there. 14732 minus 12570, you can put brackets around that, I'll just press equals, times 0 0.19, and you get 41078. So I'll just take a note of that, 41078, and then we'll do our next one. So our next one is this one. 
I, 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 for I, I. Again, this, the highest there is 25,688, which is still below his salary. So I'll just do 25,688 minus 14,732 times 20% this time, so 0 0.2. So we'll calculate again. Taking here, taking my time, 25,688 minus 14,732 times 0 0.2 is 2191.2. So 2191.20. Okay, that's II done, III. So that'll be this one. So in this case, I mean, then immediate now, 43,662 is above his salary. So I do his salary minus the lower. So his salary is 34,975.10 minus 25,688 times the percent, which is 0 0.21 this time. So again, calculate our 34,975.10 minus 25,688 times 0 0.21 is equal to 1950.29. So his total tax, I just add up all the tax that I just worked out. Four one zero point seventy eight plus two one nine one point twenty plus one nine five zero point two nine is four five five two point twenty seven. So now his net pay. I just take his total pay and take away everything. Well, I don't need to start with his total pay actually, because I've already taken away the pension, which is down here. So we can start off with the taxable bit and just take away the national insurance and the tax. So his net pay is 34975.10 minus his tax, which is 4552.27 minus his pension, which is 307145. So getting the calculator and being careful of putting everything in right. 34. 975.10 minus 4552.27 minus 3071.45 equals 27351.38. So pound sign 27351.38. Okay, let's briefly go over where you're getting the marks for this. Let me just check this. So you're getting the marks for obviously your final answer. That is clear, but taxable income. If you get 34,975.10, if you want to take away pension, you get a mark there. So let's just take a note of that here. There's a mark there. And then you get calculate the tax for starter, basic and intermediate band. So basically calculating all these taxes, you get a mark. You get a mark for calculate tax for the remaining bands and total tax to pay. So, oh, starter, you actually get a mark for doing zero then these two, and then a mark for the final and final band and the total. So you get a mark there, and then a mark obviously for your final answer, and them all up. I don't have a clear maths, that's great. Hi, Application of Maths 2023, question five. This is a spreadsheet file, Q5 Coffee, where you have to construct a scatter plot of number of calories on carbohydrate content. So number of calories is a Y, carbohydrate content is the X. If you do a scatter plot, I usually use our studio, I'm presuming you do too. And the data booklet is going to be handy for this. So let's go to the data booklet now. There is a data booklet for helpful R commands. The first one we need are my data and attach my data. Now I am going to type this in, but you can actually copy and paste these as well, which is really quite handy. But I'm going to type them in in case copy and pasting doesn't work for you anyway. So let's go to our studio, which I've got it on the cloud, but you might have had it downloaded, same kind of thing. You find your file on your computer and get it into our studio first of all. And the first thing I'm going to do is your my data. So my data up in the terminal, backslash minus, and it's read.csv and then open brackets, inverted commas, q5coffee.csv. 
inverted commas and brackets and then control enter to do that command. Now we need to do attach. So let's attach my data in brackets and enter and that's us done our attachment. So now we need to plot our scatter plot. So you go back to your data booklet and go down to graphics and you're looking for the one that says produce a scatter plot. So it's this one here. Okay. So let's go into our studio and type that in, replacing the X and the Y, of course, with our variables, which are carbohydrate content on the X and number of calories on the Y. So plot, and then it's X, Y. So X is number of calories on carbohydrate content. So you write carbohydrate content first, carbohydrate.content, just click it, comma, number, just start typing it, and it comes up of calories, name the x-axis, x lab equals inverted commas. So x ca carbohydrate content. And we're going to put our units of grams in there. And then comma y lab equals inverted commas again, number of calories. And we're going to give the units of that, which is kilocals. Okay, the next stage is to get our title. So to get our title, we put comma space main equals scatterplot of number of calories on carbohydrate content. Now the last bit of the command, we have got PCH equals 21 and we have got BG equals inverted commas black. Make sure everything's closed up properly with inverted commas and brackets and press control enter and you'll get a nice scatter plot of number of calories on carbohydrate content. That's has got our two marks. Part B. Find the correlation coefficient between the number of calories and carbohydrate content. And the data booklet is helpful for anything like this. Back to the data booklet, down to correlation and regression. The core test tells you the correlation coefficient. So it's core.test xy, nice and simple there. So back into here, core.test x is carbohydrate content. So carbohydrate content, comma, number of calories. Control enter. And we get an output. Interpret the correlation coefficient. Okay, so let's copy this into our uh, answer sheet. Well, there's an answer sheet there. You can just copy your scatter plot. And then part B, your statistical output. That is our Pearson's correlation coefficient. We can put that there. We can write our actual answer, 0.9628. 262. You actually write the answer. It's checking you understand not to use any of our values there. It's the core relation coefficient you're looking for. And interpret the co correlation coefficient. Well, the correlation coefficient is close to one. So we can say that it has got a strong positive linear relationship or association between carbohydrate content and number of calories. So let's just write something like that. There is a strong positive linear association or correlation between carbohydrate content and the number of calories. Part C of this question, find the equation of the regression line of number of calories on carbohydrate content, interpret the slope and intercept parameters. So back to data booklet for a regression line. We have got the second command here fits a linear regression line to the data. Lm y tittle x. So back to here. Lm right in the wrong place, make sure you're up there. Lm bracket y is our number of calories. Number dot of calories. Tiddle is shift hash on my keyboard. You just need to maybe look for it. But carbohydrate content. Carbohydrate dot content. Make sure the brackets close, control enter, and we get a 
output. Let's just copy that over to our answer sheet. So there's the output. There's our output. That gives us the equation quite easily. Because if, if you go back to, let's go to our studio for a moment. Carbo number of calories is up beside and carbohydrate contents on the bottom. This tells us that the number of calories, or just calories, equals the first number plus the second number times the carbohydrate content. So we just need to write that. So number of calories, I'll just type cal I'll just type calories actually, you'll be fine with that. Calories equals 73.65 plus 4.65 times carbohydrate. And we've to interpret what that means. So let's look at the slope first. So this is this number here, 4.65. That's what we call a gradient in maths. And that tells you that if you go along one on the X, you go up 4.65 in the Y. So the X is carbohydrate content and the Y is the calories. So the number of calories increases by 4.65. 6.5 kilocals for every additional one gram or G of carbohydrate. Every time you put a gram of carbohydrate in, 4.65 calories is added. Okay, the Y intercept or just we'll just write intercept. So the intercept is the first number, 73.65. That tells you what happens when there's no X, no carbohydrate. So in a drink with zero grams of carbohydrate, there will be 73.65 kilocalories. And that's all you need for that. Part D, estimate the number of calories in a drink with 59 grams of carbohydrate. So let's look at our data booklet. So we're going to use the predictive and to fit that in. So let's go to our studio again. We're going to use predict. Put that up here. Predict. LM. And it's Y to the X. So it's number dot of calories carbohydrate content and then you put a comma after the first bracket new data equals data dot frame and then bracket x equals c x is carbohydrate content so carbohydrate content equals and by c we mean the number so 59 in this case and then outside the bracket Interval equals pred. So in inverted commas pred. Make sure everything's closed. Control enter, and you will get an output. Let's copy that output, shall we? It doesn't ask us for our output, but let's just put it in anyway. That was our output, and then my answer. 348.0205, or there's two other numbers, but notice it says fit, lower, upper. But we picked the fit, 348 kilocal, and we're done there. We'll then just print this off for our examiner, making sure that our name and our centre number and all, everything else you need is in that sheet. It's going to be higher application of maths 2023 question 6. The Gantt chart below shows the activities used to complete a project. A is dependent on F and H, F is dependent on B, C and E, E is, in, is dependent on D, and activity C and B are dependent on A. What does that mean? Well, that means that if you look at A, you need to do A first before you go on to B and C. If you look at E, you need to do D first before you go on to E. If you look at F, you need to do B, C and E first, B, C and E before you go on to F. And if you look at G, you have to do F and H first before you move on to G, which is what a Gantt chart usually shows. So, state the critical path. If we look at here, I can't, I can't move on until after D. I need to wait until A. So I need to do A first, 
So A is our first thing. After A, E's already started, so it's not that. I'm now moving on to the next activity that I can do, which is either B or C. But B only lasts two, C lasts a lot longer, so it's C. Now, after C, I'm at here, moving up my Gantt chart. I can see I've got two activities that I could choose from, but that stops before this one ends. So I need to finish this one first before I move on. So that's F. And then clearly after F, there's only one activity left, which is G. So the answer is A, C, F and G. Part B, state the duration of the float time for activity B. So let's look at activity B. B and C are happening simultaneously. So there's two hours done. So I've got one, two, three hours left over before C finishes. So the float time is three, not hours, sorry, days. Because the units are days. Make sure you put your correct units in. And then the last question, just talking about what a Gantt chart is and its advantages. State an advantage of a Gantt chart. Well, a simple a reason which is worth the marks is that it's clear and simple to read. So you can just write it's clear and simple to read. Other options, looking at the mark scheme, uh, any other reasonable explanation. So another one that you could would have been taught is it's easy to see the float times because it is easy to see the float times from the bars. Next we have application of maths 2023 question 7. Taylor opens a savings account the 1st of April 21 with a deposit of 400 and then the effective interest rates as follows. She makes further deposits on the £200 on the 1st of August, £250 on the 1st of April. Calculate balance on the 31st of July 2022. On the 1st of April 21 she's put in £400. And then that takes us up to the 1st of August 21. 1st of August 21, where she puts in another £200. And the interest rate between them is 1.2% per year. 1.012 to the power of over four months in between there, four twelfths. And then she goes up to April 2022, but the interest rate changes. So I need to go to the 1st of February 1st, 2022. And the interest rate between there is still 1.012. August the 8th, August the February is 6 twelfths. Six months. Uh, and on the 1st of February, she didn't do anything. We just now go straight to the 1st of April 22, where she puts in £250. The interest rate at that point is 0.11% which is 1.0011. Use your calculator if you need to get that one. And the number of months between February and April is two. So that's squared because it's just per month. We then go to the 31st of July, which is the same as the 1st of August. And that is also 1.0011. And the number of months between there is four. So now we can just start working on this. 400 times 1.012 to the power of 4 twelfths. Then we add 200. Plus the 200 is 60159. Okay, so then we've got 60159 times 1.012 to the 6 twelfths. But then we've got times 1.0011 squared. And then we add 250 at the end. So all of that, 601.59 times 1.012 to the power of 6 twelfths times 1.011 squared plus 250 is 856.52. Okay, our next bullet point then, we start with 856.52 and we're now going times 1.0011 over 4. 856.52 times 1.0011 to the power of 4 is 860.29 to two decimal places because it's money. 294 but 29. 
Okay, and we're done part A. Just note, those two methods, to vest, and if you use the alternative method, which is in the art scheme as well, for method one, you will get 860.30. It's just to do with where the rounding takes place. Your rounding as you go with this, so your chances are going to be a little lower, but that's fine. 860.30 with method one, or using this method, which is what I prefer, 860.29. So part B says she makes a final deposit on the 1st of August of 2022 and on the 1st of December she's got a thousand pound. How much does she deposit? So this is a reverse one. If I calculate the present value, so we're starting with a thousand. We're dividing by the interest rate, which is now 1.7% per year from the 1st of August. 1.017 August, September, October, November, then into December is four months out of 12. So that will tell me how much is in our bank on the 1st of August. 1,000 divided by 1.017 to the power of 4 over 12 is 994.396, 994.40. So now to work out how much is in her account, well, what she deposited, that's what's in our account, but she already had 860.29. So we take them away. 994.40 minus 860.29 is £134.11. Now the mark scheme for this says 134.10, but that's using the answer from the other method of 860.30. Obviously we got 860.29, so it'll be a penny difference at 134.11, and that is completely fine. Next we have applications of maths, 2023, question 8. You must refer to the spreadsheet file Q8 Warehouse when answering this question. Complete parts A and B1 using the spreadsheet file. Parts B2, C and D must complete in the answer space below. Okay, and I'll just put it on a file for us so we can see the answers. It says, a warehouse company currently has 17, 50 units of stock. They deliver 20% of our current stock each week and receive 300 units of new stock per week. Complete the warehouse stock to identify the selling C10. We predict the number of stocks in the warehouse at the end of week 26. Okay, so here's the spreadsheet file. So percent of stock remaining at the end of the week, well, we deliver 20%, so that means we've got 80% left. So it's set up to be a percentage, so we can just press enter. And the number of un new units of stock per week, we said, was 300. So we need to work out what goes in this cell here. So we need a formula. So we need a formula in here. So equals, now is it an integer? Is it a whole number? What is it we're looking for? Well, it's a whole number because new units of stock can have like 2.5 units of stock. So we use integer for that, INT. And we're going to use the one above it, which is C13. And that has to be times by, now you can either type it in or click the box. So I'm going to click the box I want, I want it times by 80%. So this one, but remember we need dollars. So if it doesn't give you the dollars by clicking, you need to put it in yourself. Plus, and I'm just going to type the next one, dollar c dollar nine because i don't want them to change so just make sure you watch it for your dollars otherwise you'll end up with a whole mistake when i want to copy that all the way down we can press Control c Control v or just highlight and pull down so i'm just pulling it down and i get an answer i can just type the answer in the box or i'm just going to reference the box which is dollar c dollar 39 and that's me done part A. Part B. Extend your table in your worksheet to construct a graph to show the units of stock for 52 weeks. Using the constructed graph in B, state the type of mathematical model that describes the units of stock in the warehouse. Okay, so we have to extend the table. So the easiest way to do that is just highlight these two and pull that little corner down. And we have to go to 52 weeks. There's 51 and there's 52. So we've done that. We now need to construct a graph for this data. Okay, so we're going to construct a graph. So let's highlight our data. Insert. And for this one, I think we're going to want a scatter plot. So it's under here and scatter. And let's move it up so that it isn't somewhere appropriate. Make that a little bit bigger. Okay. We want to put our axis labels on. So axis titles. This would be number of units of stock. I suppose at the end of the week. End of the week. And this would be 
weekend or end of week. I'll just put end of week. Um, what else could we put on this? So let's see. Let's put a legend in. There you go. There's your completed craft. Let's then B part two. Using a graph construction part one, state which type of mathematical model describes the units of stock in the warehouse. Well, that's exponential decay. So I'm going to write exponential upon n shell decay. Another word you could have used for this is a recurrence relationship. I prefer exponential decay for that. It says after 53 weeks, the warehouse company plans to move to a small building with space for 400 units of stock. Comment on whether the small building will have enough space for the stock. Justify your answer. Go back to our stock. You can see here we've done it up to 52 weeks. It levels off at 1500. So we're not going to have enough space because 1500 is becoming 1400. See part one. There will not be enough space as the number of units of stock levels off at 1500 which is greater than 1400. A state one reason why this mathematical model may not be realistic. So may not be realistic because, well, what's happening? It's assuming that every single week we're going to get 300 extra units of stock. It's assuming that every single week we're going to get rid of 20% of the stock. That might not be the case. It might not, it might vary. So I could just write because the number of units of stock might not increase by the same amount each week. On our words, it's not fixed. You could have also written what I said earlier, that the amount of deliveries per week might vary. In other words, it might not be fixed. But either of the two options will give you your final mark. This is print. Warehouse worksheet and value view and formula view. So for value view, you would just go straight up to print. Um, you would make sure that it's nice and neat. Obviously, I want it on one sheet. So I want to say print active sheets. And I want maybe landscape. And I want to fit sheet to one page. Check if portrait gives you a nicer view. Either of them, portrait looks better to me. So I would print that. And then to get value view for mine, I've got the formulas, show formulas, and it shows you all the formulas you've got in there. So that's great, you can mark that, print again, and probably this time you'll probably want to put it on a landscape so you can see it better. But there you are, and then you just print it off, and we're done there. Next, we hire applications in maths 2023 questions 9. The consumer price index CPI in the UK in April 2021 was 110.4 relative to a baseline of 100 in April 2015. Explain what this figure means in terms of relative purchasing power. So purchasing power is how much you can buy basically based with, with a set amount of money. 110.4 against 100 means that I can buy the same amount of goods in 2021 with £110.4 as I could with £100 in 2015. The minimum thing you can say to get the mark is purchasing power has decreased, but I would probably say, expand on that and say £110.40 can buy the same amount of goods and services in April 2021 as £100 could buy in April 2015. Simple as that. Right, the price of a new 3 door car rose in line with a CPI between April 2015 and April 2021. In 2021, the price of a new 3 door car was 14108 Let me take a note of that. 14108. Calculate the price of a new three door car in April 2015. So the consumer price index relative to 100 is 110.4. So I can do 11. I need to divide because I'm going back to the original by 110 over 100. So 110.4 divided by 100 is a decimal. 
1.104. So let me divide by 1.104 because it's went up by 1.104. So taking my calculator, I get 14.108 divided by 1.104 is 12778.99 pound 99 pence okay the national living wage is the minimum hourly rate to be paid to an employee 23 years or older in april 21 the national living wage was 8 pound 91 this was raised to 9 pound 50 in 2022 given that a cpi in april 2022 is 119.0 determine if this rise is in line with inflation. So our new CPI is 119 relative to 100. If we divide them together, that gives me 119 divided by 110.4, So. The national living wage was £8.91 and it's been raised to £9.50. So you could compare the fractions or you could just take £8.91 and calculate when, what it should be. So times 1.0778. So £8.91 times 1.0778.9, I think it was, is £9.60 roughly. £9.60 is what it should be. So the national living wage was increased below inflation. And we're done there. Next we have applications of maths 2023 question 10. We must refer to the information E10 and the pre release material, which I've got downloaded. It says at the end of June 2021, the UK government replaced the standard E5 fuel with E10 to reduce national CO2 emissions. A newspaper paper article stated that since the nationwide introduction of E10 fuel, CO2 emissions have reduced to the effect of taking 550,000 cars off the road by the end of 2022. We have to calculate the CO2 emissions of 550,000 cars. So let's have a look at this. There's a data we've got at the side here. There's the E2. E10 petrol and CO2 is one of greenhouse gas contribute to climate change and the main benefit of E10 is it reduces it by blending petrol up to 10% ethanol less fossil fuel is needed helping us to reduce carbon emissions. The introduction of E10 in the UK is, is predicted to cut CO2 emissions by 750,000 tonnes a year equivalent to 350,000 cars. So there's the bit of information we need. 750,000 tonnes is equal to 350,000 cars. So let's get rid of that for now. So we need to work out 550,000 cars. So we just do 750,000 divided by 350,000, because that will give us one car, and then times 550,000. That's a calculator job, that one. 750, one, two, three divided by 350, 1, 2, 3, times 550, 1, 2, 3, is equal to 1178571.428. We'll just truncate that to 1178571 tonnes. That'll be fine. Or 0.4 or 0.43. Okay, next one. Suggest the reason why the information from a newspaper article might not be appropriate as part of further research on reducing CO2 emissions. A number of things here. You can say that the, the newspaper article might be biased. You say you can say the information in the article might not be accurate. You can say other other factors affect CO2 emissions, but fuel might change or cars might change. There's lots of things. But you could say, the thing you can't say, and this is very, very clear, is that you can't say that the information in a newspaper article is not accurate. You can say it might not be accurate, but you can't say it's not accurate. So I'm just going to put one of these reasons down. I'm going to say the newspaper article, newspaper, might be biased. Um, what I'm using, might not is biased. We don't know it is biased, but it might. 
If your economy of a car F miles per gallon is reduced when it carries an additional load of m kilograms, the fuel economy of small cars modelled using the following equation. F equals 73.6 times 0 0.98 to the power of m over 42. State the independent variable. Well, a variable is something that can change. So the numbers are not variables. These are just numbers. They are constants. So the independent variable here is just this m. That's the thing that changes that affects the fuel economy. So m. Estimate the fuel economy of a small car that's carrying an additional load of 150 kilograms. F, remember, is equal to this formula. So I'll just do 73.6 times 0 0.98 to the power of 150 over 45. Using my calculator. One fifty over forty five. He gets six eight eight oh six sixty eight point eight oh six. So sixty eight point eight and then the units were miles per gallon, so we need to put our units in. Oh well done for that bit. <clears throat> A customer is filling up their tank with petrol. The shape of a petrol tank inside the car is a horizontal cylinder with two hemispheres on either side, shown in the diagram. Well, we've got the depth of petrol as it goes through this tank. The three diagrams show how the depth of petrol varies with the volume of petrol in the tank. A, B and C. It's pretty much graph could model the petrol in the tank. So to work out what graph this is, well, we can see here, if you look at the picture of the tank, as this is getting filled up with liquid, since this is changing, like that, it will go in fast to start with, but it will start to slow down as it gets to the middle because it gets to its widest point. So it will go in fast and start to slow down. But once it gets to the middle, since this is symmetrical, the the width is actually decreasing as you get to the top. So it will start to get faster again once you get past the middle. So it will go in fast, once you start slowing down, then go in fast again. Go in fast, start slows down, goes in fast again. Compare that to B, that's going in slow, slower, 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 and then going fast. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't go slower, slower, slower. It goes in fast, starts to slow down. And then this one, graph C, going in fast and then steady. If it was steady, it means the depth wouldn't change, the width of this container wouldn't change at all, which isn't true, of course, because it's changing constantly. So it's graph A. And all we need to do is explain exactly what I just said. Graph A, because at start, depth increases faster, then slows in the middle, then depth increases faster again at the end. And we're done there. SQA Hannah Applications Maths 2023 question 11. This one's about Ramsey's loan and we have to use the spreadsheet. So it says Ramsey applies to take out a loan of £6,000 with a term of three years from a bank. Level monthly repayments are made at the end of each month. The effective annual interest rate is 6.3%. Open the bank loan worksheet and complete it to determine the level repayment amount and the final repayment amount when determine the total interest paid over the term of the loan. Okay, so effective interest rate equals 1 plus dollar c dollar 7 to the power of well it's 1 over 12 1 over 12 and then we need to take away 1 again to get it back to the interest rate so minus 1 and we get 0 0.510 percent the loan pay was three years the monthly repayment amount well we don't know that so we're going to do a goal seek in a minute to find it out so let's just pick a monthly repayment amount of, say, £200 for the sake of argument. Okay, so the repayment is equal to $C$10. Equals $C$10. Interest content of repayment. 
So the interest content is equal to what we have to do with monthly interest times the loan outstanding. So that equals the monthly interest, which is dollar C, dollar eight, times the loan outstanding, which is just this one here, F16. We want that to change all the time, but we don't want that to be any more than two decimal places. So we're going to round that to two decimal places. So comma two, press equals, and make sure we get two decimal places. Now we don't need to round the rest, because once we've rounded one of them, the rest will be two decimal places anyway. So the capital content of repayment is equal to the repayment minus the interest content. And then the loan outstanding is equal to the previous loan outstanding minus the capital content, how much you've paid off. So we can press equals there. So we've got our formulas filled in. And now we need to copy and paste all these down. So let's just highlight all these cells and go all the way down to 36 weeks. And you'll see that at the end, it's completely wrong because we met, we just picked a random number. So we need a goal seek to change that cell. So we're going to highlight that cell and we're going to go to data, what enough analysis, insert, goal seek. We're going to set that value to zero and we want to change our repayment amount, which is up here. So press OK. Eventually it will do the sum for us. And you'll notice that at the end we get zero. And you would maybe think you're done there, except the fact that when you do a goal seek, it doesn't really care. It's not rounded that for you. And you only want it to be two decimal places. So we're going to have to adjust that to make it two decimal places. So that gives me 182.87 in here. And then our final repayment amount will need to be adjusted as well because We've got this extra seven pence hanging about. We don't want that seven pence. To deal with that, we just add the seven pence on to 182.87. So for our final repayment amount, it equals dollar C dollar ten plus seven pence, which is 182.94. Or just in that final amount is 182.94. We can either reference it or just write 182.94. I'm going to reference it C11 equals dollar c dollar 11 and now we've got zero here which is excellent and to get our total interest paid that's just the sum of all our interest payments so the sum of here all the way down to there close the brackets press equals and we get 58339 that means the application for this loan was rejected state a reason why a bank might reject a loan application so let's just put this answer in here we might reject it, but the main reason is to do a credit check because they might have a poor credit rating. So I'm just going to write poor credit rating as my answer. Or you could mention the affordability of the loan. Okay, let's move to the next question. Ramsey decides to borrow money from a loan company. When the company offers Ramsey £6,000 for three months with a fixed level monthly payment of £250. Complete the loan repayment schedule to find the annual effective rate of interest. Determine the difference in the interest paid between the two loans. i will be able to print it off. So there's our loan company spreadsheet. £6,000. We don't know the interest rates, but we do know it's three years and it's £250. And we have to work at the total interest paid and the difference in interest paid. So the repayment we can put in here is equal to dollar $C, dollar $10. Now, annual effective interest rate, since we don't know it, we might as well just make it up. So I'm just going to say 10. And then the monthly interest rate is going to be the formula as normal equals 1 plus dollar C dollar 7 to the power of 1 over 12 take away 1. So there's our interest there. So, so the interest content of repayment, that equals, remember, we need to round. And it's going to be dollar C dollar eight, the monthly interest times the loan outstanding, which is this cell here. And we want to round that to two decimal places because it's money. We've rounded that one, so we don't need to round anything else. Capital content is just going to equal the repayment minus the interest. Press equals again. 
and the loan outstanding is just going to equal the loan outstanding it was minus the capital content. We can press equals. And now we can copy that down to 36 months. And it fills it all in, but obviously it's all wrong. Because at the end, it shouldn't load anything. So we want to do a goal seek. So we go to data. What if analysis and goal seek? We want to set that to value zero, but this time we want to change the annual interest rate. So this value here. So press OK. After a little while, it will change the annual effective rate to 32.61%, and therefore it will change his monthly interest rate to 2.38%. Now his annual interest rate is not money, so we don't need to round that to two decimal places or anything else. We just leave it as it is. It's 32.61 in a bunch, and the monthly interest rate is going to be 2.38 in a bunch, but that's fine. We can just leave that as it is. To get the total interest paid, we just need to do a sum, remember, sum of all the interest. So starting here and going all the way down to the bottom. And that gives us £3,000 of interest is paid. Wow, that's an expensive loan. If it's in total interest, well, that's just going to equal this cell minus back to our bank loan. Total interest paid in this one was this one. Press equals. And that gives me 241661. And that's the an answer to the question. So again, we're just printing this bank loan worksheet in value viewing form of you. So just a reminder, you go file, print. There's the page, but we want it on one sheet only. So we go to fit sheet on one page. Check what one looks better. I think that one looks better. And then we just print that. Now we want formula view. So you go to formula, you go to show formulas, and then you go and print that again as well. So that you can see all the formulas that you've put in. And that's us done.